It's a, a vibrant atmosphere right now, but not so as this air, air, air show. I mean, what's your own reading? Will that impact uh, the overall sentiment for the rest of the year? No, I don't think so. It's no question it's quiet here. You can see it when you walk around, but we still have a very healthy contingent of American companies, a big U.S. Uh, government delegation, and, of course, the largest participation in the U.S. military since, uh, since the show has, has existed. So those relationships, that's all an indication of how important these relationships and partners are, partnerships that have been around for years. <laughs> I think the biggest, it's, it's a combination of things right now. Anytime that you have unpredictability or uncertainty in the global marketplace, it creates problems for the industry and real problems for the supply chain, the industrial base that supports supports the industry. So all of the, the uncertainty about trade talks, tariffs that are being levied, and of course now the virus on top of that in this region does cause concern that we're monitoring, but there's still a very healthy demand for the products that the industry is producing. Talk to us about that demand because the trade turbulence would undoubtedly have some kind of impact. It does. The, the supply chain for our industry is a, a global and integrated supply chain. And so anytime you do anything with, with tariffs or trade negotiations anywhere in the world, it's going to have ramifications throughout the industry. It takes a while for us to understand what those ramifications are because there are long-term contracts, um, long lead orders for supplies and materials, and so it unfolds sort of slowly. But we, are, uh, we watch these negotiations very carefully. We're, we are all in favor of making sure that trade is fair and that intellectual property is protected. But it's also important that we maintain the free aspect of that trade as well and provide some predictability for the industry. Uh, China is becoming quite a competitor in this industry. I mean, just at the Asia alone, it is showcasing the J-10. And also, it's uh, Comag is producing its first commercial aircraft. I mean, how do you view the challenge from China within the industry? Well, it's interesting because they are a competitor, but, but in this global marketplace, they're also a supplier. They're also a customer. It really is integrated um, uh, across the world. But I would say that American products stand up very well to any competitor around the globe. And it's not just the quality of the product itself, it's the relationship that you buy into, that sustainment and maintenance relationship to make sure that whatever you're buying lives its full lifespan. Uh, geopolitics, of course, front and center. <laughs> spending because of rising geopolitics. I do, and certainly we think partnerships, global partnerships are important, and we see our allies and our partners spending more to be a part of that partnership, which is good for us internationally, both for the industry, but also for those relationships geopolitically. And the, the rising influence, uh, competitiveness, aggression, whatever you want to call it, of China is definitely an aspect, particularly in this region. You know, we've been covering the primaries in the U.S. Of course, there's expectation that perhaps Trump would have a second term as, as president of the country, what would that mean for, for, for the industry? Would that have implications? Well, it does. Obviously, whoever's president of the United States has a tremendous in, impact on the industry. How do you see that playing industry. out at Trump's second term? Well, I think what you'll see, first of all, he's already hinted at uh, leveling off defense spending or bringing it down a little bit. Um, he's also indicated that he's looking at other regions when he thinks about trade issues that he wants to address. So we see... Um, perhaps more of the instability in that way for industry planning that we're seeing with what's going on with China right now, with Mexico and Canada. But we're encouraged with the fact that they are coming to agreements on the first rounds of these things and are continuing to negotiate. There are expectations that tensions between the U.S. and China could escalate given a second term uh, of Trump in office. Could that lead to some kind of decoupling in the industry? I think it's going to be very hard to decouple. We are so integrated now economically and the supply chains. There's no question that uh, companies are looking at perhaps diversifying away from China. 
but we're so far down the path in the relationship between the countries and this global economy that I think a, a complete decoupling would be pretty impossible. We've got the phase one agreement. They're continuing to go negotiate. I think both sides see an interest in coming to agreement on some of these issues. Eric, before we let you go, just one final question and wondering, I mean, what trend do you see developing in the next 12 to 24 months within the aerospace and aviation industry? Well, I think the, the main issue is we're going to be watching the impacts on the supply chain, both what's happening with trade and tariff, with the virus, um, certainly with the geopolitical issues that are going on. I think that's the main concern that we look to going forward. But it's a very healthy industry. There's a, there's a strong demand. There's a strong backlog for the products. And so we look further than 12 months.